that's over. COVID is critical because this is what convinces people to accept, to legitimize total biometric surveillance. If we want to stop this epidemic, we need not just to monitor people, we need to monitor what's happening under their skin. What we have seen so far, it's corporations and governments collecting data about where we go, who we meet, what movies we watch. The next phase is the surveillance going under our skin. We now see mass surveillance systems established even in democratic countries, which previously rejected them. And we also see a change in the nature of surveillance. Previously, surveillance was mainly above the skin. Now it's going under the skin. Governments want to know not just where we go or who we meet. Above all, they want to know what is happening under our skin. What's our body temperature? What's our blood pressure? What, what is our medical condition? Now humans are developing even bigger powers than ever before. We are really acquiring divine powers of creation and destruction. We are really upgrading humans into gods. We are acquiring, for instance, the, the power to re-engineer life. I know that in recent years we saw populist politicians undermining deliberately the trust that people have in important institutions like universities, like respectable media outlets. These populist politicians told people that say, scientists are this small elite disconnected from the real people. I mean, all this story about Jesus rising from the dead and being the son of God, this is fake news. Humans are now hackable animals. You know, the, the whole idea that humans have, you know, this, they, they have this soul or spirit and they have free will and nobody knows what's happening inside me. So whatever I choose, whether in the election or whether in the supermarket, this is my free will, that's over. COVID is critical. Shalom. Kahalimla. Yahweh. Bahashim. Yahweh Shai. Bahashim. Rakakadash. All praises be. To the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of His Son, and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad in double honor and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you on another lesson entitled, And Then Shall That Wicked Be Revealed. So we're going to go into it. We've been talking about that man of sin, and it's talking about the biblical Edomites. Their forefather is Esau. So Edom is <laughs> interchangeable with Rome. Edom is Rome and vice versa. And through the spirit, that is the beast. Let's go into it. Matter of fact, let's go here first. We're going to go to Revelations 20. Revelations 20. See, Satan is that beast, which is Rome, which is Edom, that came back as America, the European Union, and NATO. Revelations 20, verse 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. So that angel is Yahushai. That key represents rulership, the kingdom, and the chain represents bondage, servitude. The bottomless pit is Europe. Verse 2. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand 
years. So Edom served in the Dark Ages. They were in chains, shackles. The Dark Ages took place. The hard dates are between 300 and 1300 A.D. But we know that the Most High is dealing with a eon or an age. So he views time differently because Rome started to fall as early as 90 A.D. But the hard dates that pertain to Bible prophecy that we can use to keep it simple is 300 to about 1300 A.D. Where at the end of the Dark Ages, the Edomites were released. That is when that deadly wound was healed. The end of the Dark Ages going into the Renaissance or rebirth. Renaissance means rebirth. Revelations 20, verse 3. And cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loose a little season. So when you calculate the time of the Renaissance or rebirth, it goes into approximately 666 years, a little time or a short season. Going into the Renaissance, unto the present, that's the time we're in, the end of an age. So we're in the eon or the age of Edom, their rulership. So they were released from their thousand-year bondage under the Israelites during the Dark Ages when the Israelites ruled. Now, it's called the Dark Ages mainly because there's a historical vacuum where many of the documents were hid, proving the Israelites ruled Europe for a thousand years. Now, some speculate that it's called the Dark Ages because dark people ruled, which is really, that's a, that's a myth or a telltale, what you call a, um, not fairy tale, but a, I'm trying to think of the term. It's called a, a fable. That's the word I'm looking for. That's a fable. But the truth of the matter is that period of time is hidden. The details or the historical accounts and the records of the Israelites ruling. They claim they can't find the records, which is absolutely bogus. Anyway, let's go here. So Satan or that beast or dragon is Edom. They're in power right now, and they're performing signs and wonders after the workings of Satan through their technology and are deceiving the world again, which that deception started during the Renaissance through a term called iconoclasm, where they would whitewash the original dark images of the Israelites ruling kings, priests, prophets, judges, governors, rulers. Let's go here. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Let's go to verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord, Yehoshai Hamashiach, and by our gathering together unto him. We're being gathered through the word, the spirit of Bible prophecy. And this is not about what you look like. 
if you're attracted to this word, if you're being healed or changed by the word, more than likely you're amongst the hopeful elect. Verse 2. 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 2. That ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us as that day of Hamashiach is at hand. So the day, the day of the Lord is near. The day of the Lord is near. We're close. We are very close. Let's go to verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Esau is that man of sin. The wicked one, after the workings of the wicked or the serpent. Let's go to Hebrews 12. I'm going to transition to the NLT version. Hebrews 12 or 16. Make sure that no one is immoral or godless like Esau, who traded his birthright as the firstborn son for a single meal. Ye know that afterward, when he wanted his father's blessing, he was rejected. It was too late for repentance, even though he begged with bitter tears. So he cannot repent. He was apportioned the lot of the wicked, the adversary, the antagonist in this movie. Jacob, or the sons of Jacob, the Israelites, are the protagonists in the Lord's movie. So this is his lot. Let's go to, to uh, that's the son of perdition, Esau, Edom. Verse 4, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worship, so that he, as the Most High, sitteth in the temple of the Most High, showing himself that he is the Most High. So he wants control over the temple of the Lord's people, our mind our mind, which is the central nervous control system of our bodies. He wants our mind through technology. Or so he wants to be like the most high. Let's read that again. Verse 4. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he, as the Most High, sitteth in the temple of the Most High, showing himself that he is the Most High. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things, and now ye know what would holdeth that he might be revealed in his time. See? So the Israelites fell away in 70 AD at the fall of Jerusalem when the Romans took down the Jer Jerusalem in 70 AD. The Israelites were scattered into captivity, into all nations. Let's go to verse 7. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Yahweh is going to take him out of the way. Yahweh our Lord and Savior, is coming as a thief in the night, as a robber. 
verse 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. The spirit of the Lord's mouth are of the prophets, speaking words of prophecy. And the Lord is coming back with the chariots of the Lord, chariots of fire, to judge this man and take him out of power, pursuant to Isaiah 63 and Isaiah 34. So this man is after the workings of Satan, Esau, Edom. 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 9. Let's go to verse 9. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. His technology, his research, his research and development. Let's go into that word working. Comes from the Greek. Strong's G, 1753, Energia. Energia. Operation. Use only of superhuman power. Transhumanism. Whether of the Most High or of the devil. And we know that word devil means deceiver, slanderer, or false accuser. One that is after the workings of the devil. Metaphorically, a man. See that? Superhuman workings of the devil. Verse 10. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. So many don't have this wisdom. They're going to be judged with that son of perdition, that man of sin. Verse 11, and for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. So they're going to buy in to this new world order, this global agenda, and become linked in to the beast through a digital method which links in to Revelations 13 verses 16 through 18 verse 12 that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness that's the multitude the mass mass means death the Most High is going to preserve and elect of Israel to inherit the kingdom of glory, rulership, immortality, and dominion. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rekwakadash, Barakatham. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Kwam Yasharala and abide the bow. We got next, Lord willing. Shalom.